Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a pretty good start to your weekend. As for me, it's been business as usual. Uh, still got a lot to do over the next day or so. Uh, but anyway, I just want to talk to you briefly. A lot's been going on and uh, surrounding a bunch of different things and I, I try to make my videos relevant so uh, that's either relevance in the way of um, that's either relevance in the way of um, business or there's relevance in the way of community. Uh, just to jump on and talk about something uh, because it's a hot topic, uh, that's not my thing. But what I did want to do is close out this whole Ja Morant, ja, ja Morant uh, loop and be done with it unless something else pops up. There are uh, all these compelling arguments on both sides of the spectrum. Um, there's compelling arguments, you know, that he's being judged differently because there are other players in the league that have been on cameras with guns in certain situations. There are others that are saying that if it would be a kid that was white, um, then it will be a different standard. Uh, there is a great deal of debate, you know, based on a bunch of different things. You know, uh, anybody that is saying that he should behave different is caping for the system. I've heard it all. Uh, I want to talk about what happens when you fail to properly develop uh, certain principles of manhood uh, which one is emotional intelligence and the other is emotional and cognitive maturity where you literally tr teach a young man how to make good decisions um, now first and foremost if you want to call the NBA a plantation then you can call it a plantation and you can talk about all the similarities and you can make that argument but let me explain something to you on this plantation there are those who were considered the plantation owners the, the owners of the league the, the, the billionaires who are getting richer and richer and fatter and fatter off of the talent of black athletes I, I, I get the the uh analogy I get how you come to that conclusion here's the difference on this plantation you get the vast majority of the athletic talent from black 70 something percent 70 close 75 percent of the talent in the, uh, in the league is black so then you give blacks an opportunity to have one of the most important instruments of wealth building money um and when managed right, can create situations of independence outside of that spectrum, i.e. LeBron James, Michael Jordan, a bunch of other, uh, Kobe Bryant, I mean, you go on and on, of those who made positive moves with the money they made and made themselves more wealthier as business people than they were ever were as athletes, uh, Shaq, uh, and we can go on and on. And so then what that, what that means is why it may be uh, a somewhat of a microcosm of a plantation mentality where there are people making it. But if you actually look at corporate America in general, same identical thing, they just don't pay you as much as athletes get paid. And so, uh, same identical thing. Corporations are designed for the elite of the corporation to get super, super rich off of the work and the talent and the effort and the energy of those at the bottom same situation uh, again the ones at the bottom just don't make as much so then 
we must call the entire thing a plantation and ask ourselves, what are we doing? If we're going to use that argument, here's something that I would suggest. I would suggest that we teach our young men emotional intelligence, cognitive intelligence, uh, and principles, standards, virtues, and values that govern the decisions that they make. And what I mean by that is this young man is in a position he chose as his way of making a living as um, how he plans on building a better uh, future for himself, his family, which includes a child, by the way. And the, the other argument is one that J.J. Reddick is making, and all of a sudden, again, the white man's ice is cold because he's saying it. A bunch of other people who have been saying it are now sitting up saying that should make a difference. J.J. Reddick has never been in a situation that John Moran is in. J.J. Reddick will never in his life be judged under the same lens as Jay as Jara. We're not talking about fairness here. We're talking about real life, and I think that's one of the things we miss. We always want to be judged like they're judged in their system. That's not how things work. We are operating in their system. We have failed over and over again to create a reality and an opportunity where we can operate independently of them and be the shot callers and determining on what is done and, and how it's done dependent upon certain behaviors. We, 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 we have balked on every opportunity to do that. We refuse to do that. We refuse to support anything that's talking about independence and um, economic autonomy. That's on us. So if we're going to operate and we're going to use them as a means of getting paid, we understand anywhere you go, you're going to have rules. If you don't agree with the rules, don't sign up. More importantly, I have a problem because it's not the gun at all. I'm a, I'm a gun advocate. It's not the gun. It's not the fact that he has a gun. It's the fact and the way that he's displaying it. There's a difference in display. And if you don't get it, I can't help you. So I'm not going to even go into a great detail of trying to get you to get it after I tell you my point. You either get it or you don't get it. There is a difference in displaying a gun when you're at the firing range, at the shooting range. Uh, you're displaying your First Amendment rights by standing in a picture with other friends holding your gun, all depending on how you're holding it. If you hold it and you point it at the camera, wrong. Um, if you sit up rubbing it up against your head, stupid. Um, even if it's unloaded, it's just a terrible practice. If the gun is unloaded, you don't point it at yourself. You don't point it at anybody. If there's no clip in it, there's no, no bullet in it. You never point the gun at anybody, period. You definitely don't point it at your own head. Look, just understand something. There's a level of responsibility that goes with this because Jai is one of the most popular uh, entities within the NBA. Kids are idolizing him. They will emulate him. The difference is they won't get a slap on the wrist and their suspension won't be an eight game suspension. It will be a stint in jail or prison or they will find themselves dead because someone has shot them because they're flashing a weapon. Definitely the police. When you understand all of the things that are at play here, you act accordingly. It's that simple. It is that simple. You act accordingly. With that being said, I am going to leave you with this. I personally think that the way that you straighten out erroneous behavior is through consequence. I've told you that. Whether it's them coming into our community, harming our kids, harming our women, harming our men, um, consequence. Same thing within my home, consequence. You do something you shouldn't do, the consequence. If you want someone not to do something to you or you want someone to learn not to do something, you apply a negative consequence that's uncomfortable enough that they think about it the next time they get ready to do it. I think there has to be a consequence. This isn't me caping for the NBA. This is me caping for our kids that are sitting up watching him. This is me actually hoping that he has a good 
life that he learns that he grows up because he's in a position to be impactful he's in a position to make a difference he's in a position at the very minimum to make sure nobody in his family ever has to worry about money now it's up to him what he's going to do with that so that's my take on it we have to stop making excuses and using racism as a reason to cloak stupid behavior. We're talking about six instances with guns. So obviously that's a thing with guns because we're talking six. No, I take that back. Six instances all together. Four were guns. Two was some stuff that's going on with his mom. That's way too much stuff in less than a year. We need to sit up and say, okay, you can't keep... Because what's going to happen is the more he does things and he gets away with it, the more impervious to reality and life and consequence he thinks he is. And the more bro, bold, emboldened and, and brazen he's going to become with his behavior until he's going to cross a line and he's going to end up like so many brothers I've seen that look like him that are now sitting behind bars or that are now six feet under because they thought the rules of life didn't apply to them. I would much rather him uh, have a rude awakening now and then sit up and say, okay, damn, this real. These people ain't playing because they're not playing, whether it's the league or it's the judicial system. These people ain't playing and you got a target on your back. Sitting up hollering, they just racist, won't take the target off. We gotta do better. On that note, I'm out of here. Look, don't forget, we are in the midst of a fundraiser and we need your support. Look in the description box, show some love for the work we do in the community on a day-to-day -day basis, and I mean day-to-day. -day. Click the link and give. We need your support, donate. On that note, I'm out of here, have a great day.